Hey there, welcome to the latest Hiker Homily. Glad to have you. Today, at this time, I'm going to talk about uh, what I consider probably the top five skills that any hiker, or especially backpacker, um, should have, should, you know, kind of collect in your uh, skills repertoire. So that's what we're going on today. Hopefully, uh, you'll uh, pick up some pointers here as far as what kind of things you should be doing if you're going to be serious about going out, especially in the backcountry. Now, none of these skills will hurt if all you do is day hike and shorter stuff like that. But if you're going to do any kind of even just overnight backpacking out in the backcountry and things like that, you really should have these skills. So here we go. So the first skill, and I'm not really putting these in any particular order as far as, you know, the most important to least important or anything like that. Just kind of general, top five. Um, the first one that just popped right into my head, however, is navigation orienteering. And by that I don't mean pulling up a GPS app and looking at it on your screen. <laughs> um, you really should, even if you're going to be a day hiker, uh, know how to use a map and a compass together. Know how to look at uh, landmarks, figure out where you're at in a landscape, and things like that. Uh, it's an important skill, it really is. That's one of the reasons why it just popped right into my head. But especially if you're going to be a backpacker, especially a long distance backpacker, um, I get it. We live in a modern age. I myself use things like GPS locators and the gut hooks app and all those fun things. Um, but you need to have, at the very least, as a backup, an actual paper map and a compass. And knowing how to use them is, uh, is, is very important. So that would be uh, skill number one is, is navigation, what they call Orient, orienteering how to actually use that map in conjunction with your compass to use landmarks to figure out where you're at and therefore being able to figure out how to get out of where you're at if you need that I think it's a skill that is kind of fading because of our technology people lean on that more and more and like I said I am not bagging on technology I use it um, on the uh, Lost Coast Trail, several of the last few trips I've taken in the Sierras. That's pretty much all I used was my my GPS locator, my apps. I was able to use those on my phone and then just recharge that at night when I'm sleeping. And it worked out just fine. Now, did I have a map and compass in my backpack? I absolutely do. I always do. Uh, do I know how to use both those things together? Yes, I do. So again, that's, that's just an important skill, uh, even if it only becomes an emergency skill for you. Uh, that's what a lot of these top five skills probably will be. So map and compass, how to use them. That's called navigation skills or orienteering. That's the, the, the first thing when I talked about, oh, when I thought about what kind of skills are important for a hiker or a backpacker. That's the first one that just popped right in my head. And I really think it is even though I'm not ranking these, probably one of the most important things. So the second thing that just uh, really just popped right into mind is basic first aid skills. Any hiker, especially even a day hiker, uh, doesn't matter. You're not going to go out there overnight. Basic first aid skills are very important to help yourself, and to help anyone else you might run into that may need it. And don't let the fact that something as specific as wilderness first aid um, is not something that's readily available and unfortunately in most cases it's not cheap. <clears throat> um, so if it's not within your means or your ability to do wilderness first aid then don't just throw up your hands and say, well, then the hell with it. I, if I can't do wilderness first aid, regular first aid is not going to do any good. That's not true at all. Just any basic first aid course. And in a lot of cases, you can get that 
very inexpensively, sometimes even for free, at places like the Red Cross, uh, all, all kinds of other entities like that. Teach basic first aid, CPR, stuff like that. And uh, that's one of those skills, by the way, that you carry for, for life. It, it's, it's not just for hiking. You can be walking down a street in your city and somebody gets hurt in front of you and you can help do first aid. Help them. Help yourself if you get injured. You know what to do. Things like that. So uh, that's not just a hiking skill. Uh, as a former instructor for first responders in first aid, CPR, AED, all of that, I can tell you that it's a, a skill you'll never know when you need. And as we taught in our classes, even though I was teaching first responders, even for the general citizen, there are good Samaritan laws out there protect you against lawsuits. Because, well, unfortunately, we live in a world of litigation, especially in parts of the uh, United States, where, oh my gosh, yes, you saved my life with CPR, but you broke a rib, so I'm going to sue you. There are what they call good Samaritan laws that protect people who step up to do the right thing and work within your scope. I mean, obviously, if you know basic first aid and this person needs a tracheotomy, you're not qualified to do it. So don't, don't do that. Um, but basic things, putting on a bandage, learn how to put on a tourniquet properly, um, all of that kind of thing. CPR, that's within your scope. It's a good skill to know. And even if it's not wilderness first aid, it could come in handy uh, when you're on the trail as a hiker. So that would be number two, basic first aid. If you can get wilderness first aid, that's outstanding, go for it. And if you're a long distance backpacker, I totally recommend somehow uh, picking up that skill. But if you're a casual hiker, overnight backpacker, or you just can't find a wilderness first aid class or you don't have the money because they can be expensive, like I said, um, well then at least a basic first aid class should be on any hiker's repertoire. So we're on to number three now, and that would be basic animal safety. Now what the heck is that, right? Do I have to like know about every animal on the planet? No, no. What you do for that one is going back to what I've talked about in some of my other hiker homilies, is you learn how to do specific research, especially specifically to you. What kind of places do you normally hike in? What is your usual hiking area? For me, that's the Central Valley, California, and the foothills. So I'm gonna learn things that are mostly relevant to that. And that means most of the animals that I wanna be not concerned about, but aware of, would be mountain lions, coyote, uh, rattlesnakes, things like that. Now I'm gonna to wanna to make myself aware of some of the other wildlife out here so I can practice leave no trace which is respect wildlife that's one of the principles <clears throat> and you got to know how to do that um, but so basic animal safety means you're going to tailor your research to the animals that you're most likely to find now of course if I'm gonna go outside my area like say I get this great opportunity to go hike in Yellowstone okay we have no grizzly bears in California I have met and dealt with black bears in California up in the Sierras many times hiking. Grizzly bears are a little bit of a different cousin there. So I'm going to research how to deal with that, what to do for a grizzly bear encounter before I head out to Yellowstone to backpack if I get that kind of an opportunity. See what I mean? But in general, for the type of hiking I do, in my area, it's going to be black bears, mountain lions, rattlesnakes, coyote, things like that. Now, I'm also going to do other research, too. I'm going to know what a fox den looks like, just so I know. That's a fox den. That's a such and such nest. That kind of information could be important for number one survival situations. 
and number two to help you like i say respect wildlife okay i know there's a fox in this area it may even since it's daytime be in that den right now so i'm gonna be cool because you know any animal any animal even a squirrel can be dangerous if frightened backed into a corner threatened so you don't want to do that kind of thing but i am going to learn basic safety things what to do for a mountain lion encounter if a coyote is approaching you which is very unusual by the way uh, what to do if you see a rattlesnake on a trail that kind of thing can happen in the central valley in the foothills on both sides of me the sierras and if i head south into the desert areas so that's what i mean by animal safety is you're going to learn the basics you're going to learn the basics about uh the animals that you're most likely to encounter on your normal hikes where you normally go and then of course it should be common sense for you to understand that that also means if uh you're going to go outside your normal area you should do some research on the type of uh, wildlife that is in that area and what to do for those encounters so number three basic animal safety so i forgot adding on to animal safety basic animal safety any kind of research or good course you may be able to take on uh basic safety on how to deal with animals as as gross as this might sound to some of you some hikers are like well yeah that makes perfect sense but if you're kind of new to the hiking world or you're not really in deep into the hiking community you just kind of go out now and then this may sound gross but you need to learn to identify scat and if you know what scat don't know what scat is that means poop animal poop you need to know the difference between a domestic dog turd and coyote scat you need to know what bear scat looks like you need to know mountain lion scat why because more than likely that's what you're going to see before you ever see the animal they're going to that's going to tell you what's in the area i know there are raccoons here because that's definitely raccoon scat that's fox that's you need to learn how to discern different types of poop whatever i can hear some of you out there oh, you're disgusting get over it I know some of you are probably out there will forget it then i am not hiking if i have to learn poop no hiking for me but whatever go ahead <laughs> that's unfortunate but um it is an important skill and it is part of animal safety you got to know what's in the area and that is one way to know is the droppings they leave all right okay since we've covered the fauna uh, it is only appropriate then that my next thing for number four would be the flora. Basic plant safety. Yes, you have to know what plant poop looks like. All right, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But you should be able to identify basic plants. And there's two reasons for that. Number one is in case you get into a survival situation, there are plants out there. Um, as much as this sounds like Grizzly Adams and all that kind of stuff, Boy, did I just date myself there or what? And that's how old I am. Um, <clears throat> there are edible plants that you should be able to identify that can help keep you alive if you get stuck out there and need a rescue and the rescue is a little while coming. Um, but then number two is a safety thing. You need to know what poison oak looks like, what poison ivy looks like, what poodle dog bush looks like. Some of you probably have never heard of that unless you're a PCT aficionado or hiker or <clears throat> have done any kind of study on the PCT because that's usually where you find it is out in the desert. Well, you don't got to be a PCT hiker to run into it. That stuff grows all over in the desert in burn areas. So you need to know how to identify it because boy, will it ruin your day week and month if you get that stuff on you so basic plant safety knowing the good plants that could help help you out for various things everything from medicinally to help you with sunburn to help you with uh, uh, edible things to knowing the bad plants that if you come in contact with them could be poisonous 
or you'll have a bad reaction to them. And I'm talking, especially when we're talking like Poodle Dog, that's supposed to be like Poison Ivy times 10. It's not fun. So basic plant safety. Knowing what they are, what's gonna grow in your area, what to look out for, how to tell them. And remember, plants come in different stages. So what does a young plant look like compared to a mature one that's flowered? Plant safety. So the fifth thing that uh, I think is a, a big skill for most hikers, backpackers to have would be basic weather safety. And I remember I keep emphasizing that all these things are basic. You don't need a master's degree or a PhD in these topics uh, before you go out backpacking. You just need the basic knowledge uh, that is kind of specifically narrowed into the type of hiking that you're going to be doing in the area that you're going to be mostly doing it in. And if you need further research, like I said before, uh, especially with the animal thing, you're going to do that specific research for that specific area if you're going to end up going there. So basic stuff. And so this last one, basic weather safety. Knowing what to look for when you're out there. And also, before you get out there, knowing what to do in the event of certain types of weather, okay? Again, and my examples quite often are the Sierras because that is the closest major mountain range to me and that's where I have most of my backpacking experience would be the Sierras. So you just need to know your general area that you're gonna do most of your hiking in, the kinds of weather, weather patterns it uh, usually deals with and what those weather patterns look like when you're actually out there. Are those clouds a storm coming toward me? Or is that just the way things look around here in a storm or a thunderhead looks actually more like this? See what I mean? There can be, you know, different ways to know that. But you should also know basic stuff like I was saying. How to deal with things. What if I am out there and this has actually happened to me? What if I'm out there in the middle of the summer? It's late June. I'm in the Sierras. Had a great hike. Time to set up camp. And as I'm setting up camp, snow starts to fall. And it keeps falling. What do I need to do? Because I have some basic stuff. It's the middle of June. I didn't bring my down jacket. I have my light jacket and maybe some rain gear. What the heck am I supposed to do? So you need to know that kind of stuff, just in case. Uh, spoiler alert, when that situation happened, it ended up snowing about three inches. In June, three inches of snow hit the ground. And me and the other two that I was with were like, wow. We ended up calling that the no snow trip, because there was snow. So know what to do for different types of things. What does hail mean? In the mountains that could mean lightning. So if you're up high elevation on a peak or something, get the heck off of there. Uh, know what a thunderhead looks like when it's coming at you. Know what a rainstorm looks like. All that kind of thing. And you can learn that kind of stuff. And a lot of that can be experience. I know what a Sierra storm looks like and how fast they can move in because I've been in quite a few when I'm out there backpacking. I learned by experience. So now when I look out in the distance and see certain types of colored clouds coming over a mountain, I'm like, okay, we're going to get a storm tonight. And there's a good chance that storm's going to last a whole 30 minutes and then be gone because sometimes that's how the Sierras are. It'll hit you hard with something just crazy for a short time and then it'll move on. <sighs> but you got to know what the things look like. You got to know what to do when they do hit and stuff like that. So basic weather safety would be the final thing that I would suggest every hiker know. Pick up as a skill. So hopefully that's been helpful. Helped you with something. I, I certainly hope so. Uh, something to think about and if you're able to get those skills some of these skills are very easy you can do it yourself on the internet Google is a powerful thing there's a lot of information out there just make sure you're vetting your information you're not getting it from some crackpot 
or know-it-all and things like that that you're actually getting it from somebody who knows what they're doing and there are ways to do that you just got to learn how to how to research properly but uh yeah get get good information things like that there are classes out there you can take uh but all five of those i think are probably the top skills that any hiker especially backpacker really should have in their repertoire when they go out there that's about it any good stories any good skills you think should be added to a list i mean i know there's other skills out there a lot of basic survival skills and things like that how to start a fire all that kind of thing i get that i just figured for the top five i wasn't going to go into heavy survival mode just the basic stuff that everybody should know for your basic if everything's going right backpack trip how to keep everything going right by not blundering into poison oak or not knowing what to do with a rattlesnake on a trail or things like that basic stuff so any other basic uh skills you want to add to the list as always comments are welcome down below or on the other platforms where I am also called Hiking for Health CA, or you can get a hold of me as always at hikingforhealthca at gmail.com. And also, as always, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And I'll catch you later.